This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. We've got the round pen set up today. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start communicating with him a little bit more like a horse would communicate with another horse. And one of the first things that another horse will do when they're trying to establish dominance is they will drive and control the direction and speed and where the other horse that they're trying to control goes. So I'm going to do that with Jack. You can see where it would look a little bit like the lunge line work I've already done. So it feels a little bit familiar. I have him off the lunge line in the round pen today because I want to do a lot of stuff that is very mentally engaging with him and it takes away the temptation for me to use the rope and it's going to give him the freedom to make a few more choices. For example, he could turn to the outside, which would mean his head would turn out by the gate and his butt would be towards me instead of doing an inside turn. That's something he really can't do on the lunge line. We actually saw him on day two try to do an outside turn. We can see him swirling his head around a little bit, especially he's been doing it over on this side of the pen here. Right through here, he's kind of got this little, little attitude there. And he's realizing that I'm controlling him. A lot like when he and Popcorn were turned out the other day and they're communicating with each other. I'm communicating with him and he's communicating with me. So he's got a little bit of questioning whether or not I really am in control. And that's what he's doing when he's got that little head swirl. There's thoughts going through his mind. Right there he looked in. He almost thought about turning in and facing me. That's worked when we've been lunging. You see some licking, some chewing, dropping his head up and down. I'm going to go ahead and the next time around, right through that spot and right there, right there what happened was he had a little bit of that attitude and that I was right in that range where I could reach him. So I reached out there and smacked him on the butt. Be very si it would be very similar to what Popcorn did when Jack was swirling around behind him and then Popcorn went ahead and reached out there and kind of kicked at him and backed him off. So this is the communication we're having. I'm going to go ahead and ask for an inside turn here. I'm going to back up, come around here, cut him off, and then drive him forward. With other horses, it would be harder to get an inside turn. He's got so much draw towards me, being that he wants to be a little bit aggressive, very curious. So the inside turn was pretty easy. But I'll have to show you when he... In a little while, we'll probably run into some outside turns, and I'll show you how you'll fix that if your horse is turning to the outside when you'd rather have him turning to the inside. Right now, what he's doing, he's asking a lot of questions. He's saying, are you really in control? Do you really know what you're doing? Am I really having to pay attention to you? And when he's swirling around like that, that's just evidence that that's what, he's, that's what he's thinking. Those are spots where I keep driving him forward. In a minute, I'm going to do the kissing like I did on the lunge line and get after him, and that will probably change his attitude a little bit more. I kissed, he went, but I went ahead and whipped anyway because I wanted to... I want to make him just a little more respectful. You can tell he's not scared because he's not even maintaining the lope. If you've got a scared one, they'll be running real fast, trying to get away, wild look in their eye. We don't see any of that with him. I'm going to ask for another inside turn over here at 9 o'clock. If straight behind me is, the, is 12 o'clock at those doors behind me, I'll ask for an inside turn around that nine o'clock position. I backed away. And again, like I showed you earlier this week, when I back away, that calls him into my space. So when I back away, he's more interested in coming in and challenging me a little bit, and that's how I start that inside turn. I need that kiss cue to be really strong because it's going to be what keeps me safe when I get on and I'm riding them because they don't buck well or rear well if they 
are loping, moving forward. They can get you in trouble if they're not moving forward. I give him the warning with the kiss, then I go after him. That's how he'll eventually get to the point where the kiss is a warning and a request. And I won't have to follow through all the time. But it's just like asking a kid to clean their room or do the dishes. If you ask them and they don't do it and you don't follow up, they're going to get worse. So I have to follow through. Inside turn, I back away. I'm going to let him rest here for just a minute. So I just stopped Jack over here by doing an inside turn. And then I went ahead and put a rope on him. What I'm also going to start to talk about is training cycles. So he just did a physically hard training cycle. So now I'm going to go ahead and give him a chance to take a break. He's blown off some steam. I'm going to give him a chance to take a little break, but we're going to go into a mental training cycle while he's being quiet. What I'm going to start preparing him for is I'd like to put a bridle on him. And so I'm going to start to pretend that this rope is a bridle. And you would take the bridle often and pull it up over their ears. So I want to make sure he's good with that, and I don't have to have the bridle in my hands. And the other thing we're, we're going to obviously do with, with a bridle is we're going to put a bit in his mouth. And so I'm going to start doing what I just did there, which is just sticking my finger in the corner of his mouth. I'm going to switch side to side just because I want to keep him pretty balanced mentally. And I'm just sticking my finger in, and when he spits to try to spit it out, I take my finger out. Basically, I'm teaching him to have the response of trying to spit whatever I put in his mouth out. So I'm trying to do that because when he does that motion, when he, when he does that spitting, and notice he's not throwing his head all around, that's going to be what's going to get the bit into his mouth, is that ability to get his teeth to open up like that so I can slip it up in. And the other thing is I'm going to be paying attention to whether he's throwing his head around. If you've got a horse that gives you bridling problems, these are some great exercises. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this rope and I'm going to pretend, I'm going to kind of slide it up here like it was a bridle, slide it down over here pretending that this rope is the bit, and I'm going to take this pretend bit and I'm going to slide it up into his mouth and I'm going to hold it up there. And what's really nice about pretending to bridle them with a rope the first few times is that there's nothing to bang on their teeth. One of the biggest mistakes people make with even older horses, colts especially, but even older horses, is that when they're handling the bit, they let that bit bang into that horse's teeth. I'm going to go ahead and drop my pretend bridle and let him spit it out. You'll notice he caught it partway in his teeth. I want this to be a comfortable experience. If you let that horse bang the, its teeth or if you accidentally, when you go to take it out, if that horse has gotten real quiet and isn't chewing like this, and you pull that off over their ears and pull down and that bangs into their teeth, they're going to get real weird real fast about the bit going in and out of their mouth. What do you think there, Jack? That's one of the strangest things we've done to you yet. So let me go ahead and reach up here, slide under, stick that thumb in the corner of his mouth, slip that bit up in, slide the first ear in, decide whether or not it's too tight, looks pretty good. Slide both ears in, nice and smooth. And Jack is now trying to figure out why it won't fall out of his mouth. Blah, blah, blah. Now, if you think about it, I took a few minutes trying to train him to spit my finger out. So basically, I trained him to spit my finger out so I could get the bit into his mouth. But now he's trying to apply that same rule to the bit. He's going, usually if I go blah, 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 it falls out. And so... I may have caused a little bit of that, but it's going to go away real quick because what I'm about to do is go ahead and just let Jack carry that bit around. It's not going to be used for anything right now. He's just going to get used to it. What it's going to do for me is it's going to give me the opportunity to work with him while he's a little distracted. So he's a little distracted by the bit, but I'm going to go ahead and put him to work just like the first work cycle right now. You'll notice that when I put him to work, his mouth has gotten quieter more of the time. So I'm giving him multiple things to think about, and this is going to help improve his ability to switch gears quickly under pressure. Very good. Jack, you're smart. He's like, it still won't fall out of my mouth. 
That's really annoying. If I could just spit it at the right angle, I'm sure it would go away. So I'll let Jack wear this bit for the next few days without it meaning anything. I won't pull on it. I will just leave it in there and let him contemplate it. And he'll figure out that the spitting out's not working. And that's when his mouth will start to get more quiet. I'm going to go ahead and grab a tarp and show you another exercise that I'm going to use to get Jack's brain really engaged in working. So I'm going to set this up. I've left probably five or six feet over here between the fence and the tarp. And I'm just going to see what Jack does when I go ahead and drive him around there. I'm going to set him away from it and up on this side and watch his body language. That's pretty confident right there. He didn't run completely away from it. He actually went like he was headed right between it and the fence, and then he went ahead and turned and looked at it. You did see him get tight, like he really balled up there, which was preparing to do whatever he might need to do. Kick, strike, fight, but he was real curious. He turned himself around. I'm going to go ahead and drive him by this way. A lot of this is gathering information. I am training, but a lot of it's my observations are as important. I'm not even turning him back to the tarp. He's just turning himself back. So what's interesting here to me is I think this horse has a ton of curiosity, which is really good, but I also want to make sure that he's paying attention to me. Because if he's telling me that he's got this much curiosity, the one problem I can see a ton of curiosity bringing up would be that he may forget to pay attention to me. So that's just kind of in the back of my mind, not a big deal. I'm not stressed out about it either way. <laughs> there were a lot of questions right there because I wasn't giving him clear direction. He kind of thought, am I supposed to go left? Am I supposed to go right? Am I supposed to inside turn? So this is also making me think I better have a clear plan when I work with Jack because Jack's doing a lot of thinking. The tarp isn't only about overcoming fear though. The tarp is about giving me some kind of a target <laughs> some kind of a target. Now right there was the first time that we've seen Jack do an outside turn. And again, it was just out of distraction, not really paying attention to me. He's real curious about his new toy, the tarp. Inside turn, really nice there. Right there. He's not really, he, I'm glad he's curious about the tarp. But as I said it before, I'm not as worried at the moment about what he's scared of. He's thinking about doing an in outside turn. If he makes that mistake, I'm going to go ahead and cut him off and I'm going to make him wish that he hadn't turned that direction and I'm going to let him lope around here probably four or five times. There's one and I'm going to let him go around here four or five times and think, wow, she really didn't like something I did there. There's two. Three. You'll notice we're maintaining the lope longer than we ever have. Four, ask for the inside turn, and he says, wow, she was really serious about something I did there. How about if I spin? <laughs> Jack, you're hysterical. So I want to do two or three things. Right here, what he's doing is he's, he's pulling on me again. I haven't tied him in the stall yet, but that's something I'm going to do in the next few days. But this is, again, where he's got some resistance to the idea of being pulled on. It's been aggravated by adding the bit. So because I added that bit, he's got a little more tossing his head around and fight. I'm going to do just a little bit more of that pulling on him to trot. At some point after he spends a little more time with popcorn, I'll go ahead and pony him from popcorn, and that's going to help quite a bit. But this is where that distraction of the bit is making him regress in something he knew. Better. It's worth noting right now that if you don't have the time to work your horse for 45 minutes or an hour, if you want to stop any of these cycles where I've done exercise 
and then emotional. So physical cycle and then an emotional cycle. After the end of any of those cycles, I could choose to be done. I could choose to be done right now. We've done a couple physical and then emotional cycles. At the end of any of those, I could have just ended. So this is what you're looking for is a physical cycle followed by a nice emotional cycle that ends nice and quiet like this. Any of these would be good places to end. But I'm gonna keep going on. <laughs> okay, Jack, let's put you into a little bit of a work cycle. Okay. And Jack's been pretty good throughout this training. So I'm not going to put him into a really long physical cycle right now because I've done several cycles. You can see if you just watch his sides that he's breathing a little bit harder. You can see the, his breathing rate in his sides and that's what I'm looking at. I'm also paying attention to the fact that he's not being nearly as full of attitude as he was at the beginning. So if he had a lot of attitude when I was driving him around there, I would think I better keep going with the physical. But since he's being pretty quiet, I'm going to go ahead and come back and do something that's, again, a little bit more emotional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rope here and I'm going to, I'm going to just drop it over his body. You can see him backing away from me a little bit. That's because he's kind of questioning what I could be coming up with next because he's starting to think, boy, she changes things fast around here. Which I know it's not too fast because he's not getting too scared, but I also know it's not too slow because if I were going too slow, what could happen is he would start bossing me around. Because it's just like a kid. If a kid gets really bored, they start messing around with you. My husband came up with a saying years ago, and he always says, if you don't keep kids busy, they'll keep you busy. So somebody's going to be keeping somebody busy, and I'm choosing that this somebody's going to be me keeping Jack busy. What I've done right now is I've just taken this nice soft rope and wrapped it around his middle. He's backing up because he's trying to figure out how to get me back in front of him. I've given him a lot of rest cycles where I'm standing in the middle of the pen and he's facing me. And so he's starting to think, if I can just get her in front of me, it'll all go away. It'll be a rest cycle. So I've got to spend a little bit more time resting him with me off to his side. That's, what the other th that's the other thing that he's telling me. Take this time to knock off some of the hair. And now I'm going to take this rope here, and I've got it held in two hands, and I'm going to squeeze him with it. Just a real quick squeeze like that, and then I'm going to let go. And you can see that that made him just a little bit uncomfortable. He raised his head up. He backed up a step. And I'm going to go ahead and do it again, squeeze him, but then I'm going to lead him forward a step because I saw him think about taking a step back and I don't want him backing up when I'm cinching up the saddle. It's a pet peeve of mine. I like him to stand nice and still. Jack, that's got to be a little uncomfortable standing like that. You know, if you straighten up those two front legs, you'll have better balance. You look a little bit like a tripod. Okay, there you go. It's a pet peeve of mine when the horses look like they're going to um, back up when you're cinching them up, thinking about, you know, being funny in the cross ties. So I want to make sure that I don't cause that right now. We already know that he wants to back up because he'd rather have me in front of him. So every time he does that, I'm going to go ahead and just lead him forward, stand back here, rub him, come in here, squeeze him once, and then lead him forward. I'm going to repeat this kind of quickly several times here. If anything, I might start driving him forward into a little walk circle. Squeeze, forward, squeeze. That's a different squeeze. It's more like a pull, but it's still squeezing underneath him. Forward, squeeze, forward, squeeze, forward. So I'm stringing these two things together. He chose to stop, I'm going to reward him, and then I'm going to squeeze and let go. Now, did you notice that instead of him backing up, he thought about taking a step forward, which ended up being slightly to the right, but it wasn't a backward step. That's what we were after there. Now, because Jack wants to back up so consistently, 
I'm gonna go ahead and add forward motion to this squeeze around his middle. So I've gone ahead and grabbed another 24 foot line and I'm gonna wrap this around his middle and that's gonna give me the ability to drive him forward and squeeze him at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put this one rope around his middle And then I've got this one rope on his head, and I can actually squeeze him like that. So squeeze, and he's going forward. Squeeze, and he's going forward, and he's a little upset with it. And so that's that little bit of that cinchiness that you can see when he's just standing still. But I want to add a way to work on this while we're moving forward, because he's so he's thinking about backing up. And there, that was really good. I pulled pretty hard, pulled, no reaction, keep him going. He's thinking about turning in towards me, pull. Thinking about turning in towards me, I just drive him forward, pull, there. So I'm gonna stand way out in front of him and I'm gonna pull him slightly forward, pull him slightly forward, jump, make sure he's still breathing. Good job, Jack. Let's do that from the other side. I'm gonna pull his head towards me. And now I'm gonna pull on the belly rope. I'm paying attention that in case he gets cinchy and acts like he's grabbed and wants to jump forward, I'm gonna make sure I'm not right in front of him, but I wanna pull just on that belly rope and see if I can't, so you can see that backwards we were talking about and a little bit of that cinchy and he stepped forward. Backwards, and then a little bit forward. That's why I'm doing all this work so that when I go ahead and saddle him, he'll be nice and quiet. And one more time, stopped, pull on the belly rope, nice step forward. Pull on the belly rope, nice. Good job, Jack. That's a lot of stuff to learn in one day. So I'm gonna go ahead for the next couple of days and just work on what I've done here today and then I'll pick up in the next session. Tune in next time as the conversation between Stacy and Jack continues.